this is a really interesting year because it's an election year. And one big thing that's talked about is what is going to happen with the tax rates in the future, right? And so I think there's a lot we can do proactively while we know where tax rates are now. Yeah, right? that's true. I mean, things like Roth conversions, um, you know, where you're taking money out of your traditional IRA, you're paying taxes on today's rates, moving over to a Roth. And, you know, with tax rates potentially being lower and going up next year, uh, it's a good time to do that because you're basically getting taxes on sale. Yeah, those tax rates, they sunset at the end of next year. And it's such an awesome time if you're in a low tax bracket this year. Like, and you only have to the end of the year to do it, by the way. You can't mm -hmm. do that next year for this year's tax year. That's important. You know, along with like tax losses, any losses you have, you can book in your regular taxable accounts. Huge. And most of us ignore doing that, which is mm -hmm. a great time to do that. Yeah. And the other big thing that we look at is inherited IRAs. So you have to take money from an inherited IRA every single year. And the rules have gotten a little tricky on this. But if you inherit it in the last couple of years, the IRS has been waiving it. They've just been like, eh, don't worry about it. We'll, we'll push this issue down the line. This is the last year that they're saying they're going to waive it. So next year, you're going to have to take those distributions. You have one more year here. We can get a little more creative on tax planning if you have those inherited IRAs. Yeah. And one thing to think about is, especially if you've got an inherited IRA that you got after 2020 mm -hmm. is that you have to take that entire account balance out within 10 years. So, mm -hmm. you know, according to your point, with the tax rates being potentially lower this year and going up next year, you know, it might be a good time to take some more of those distributions out and level those out over the next few years. Yeah, we have some clients, though, who actually are preferring to defer it in order to do more things like Roth conversions or saying, eh, you know what, if I take it in nine years versus 10, but I can get more into a Roth, there's some creative things you can do tax planning like that. That's huge, right? Because this year could be one of the lower tax years we'll ever have. Correct. <laughs> Especially with all that deficit spending, I feel like the government somehow is going to tax us more in the future. Just a guess. Um, you know, the other thing to look at, too, is, you know, talking about capital gains. Like if you have a mm -hmm. big capital gain to take, you can break it up between this year and next year, right? You mm -hmm. could sell some this year and then the slate's clean. You could start again in 2025. So you can really break up that tax, uh, especially if you have some concentrated gains. And let's face it, hopefully if you're invested correctly, you definitely have some capital gains this year. Yeah, and if Ryan's your advisor, you have no tax loss harvest this year just because <laughs> you've made so much money. <laughs> so much money. <laughs> and you know, another thing to think about too, especially going back to the IRAs, is uh, if, you're, if you're at that required minimum distribution age, you can actually donate uh, some of your RMD to charity uh, mm -hmm. and that deducts from your income. Uh, they call it a qualified charitable distribution. So you know, for those of you that are more charitably inclined or make those kind of contributions, absolutely do it from your IRA. It's a great point. The other thing too is I think you should look at is that emergency fund. And I feel like a lot of times our emergency fund is too big, right? People, uh, we're sitting on so much more money in money market funds, cash. Mm -hmm. And now with interest rates coming down, right? The Fed's cutting interest rates. Like you have to ask yourself, like, do I have too much money in savings? Our rule of thumb is keep six months worth of savings. But if you have a lot more above and beyond that, it might be a good idea to start getting that money invested. Um, and we talked about this on the first segment, but do it before the election. Get it done. Get that money invested because the Fed's going to probably continue to cut interest rates. And you know, you got to assess, am I sitting with way too much money in cash, essentially? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm actually really thankful, Ryan, that you keep a big emergency fund just in case you need to bail me out of jail after the holiday party this year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, you know, conversely, Rye, um, one of the things I find, especially with my retired clients, is they tend to have a lot less cash. You know, they've been saving their entire lives and, you know, they really just hate taking money out of their accounts. And what happens is they start to draw those accounts down and then, you know, they're calling us in a panic to say, hey, you know, I'm running out of money. We need to get some cash raised. Right. So you might have to re replenish it as well. Yeah. And I think what you want to look at, too, is with any cash you have or making sure that your clients do have enough cash for the next six months is where is that sitting? Because a lot of the bank accounts are still not paying any interest. So that's where even when you want six months worth of cash, you can have that in a high yield savings account. You can have that in a money market account, maybe some short term CDs. Like there's some good options here. And especially now while rates are coming down, but still at good rates, it's a good time to lock into some of those. And that also brings another good point is like, know where all your money is. You know, how many times we sit down with a client and it's like, oh, I think I have this old 401k over here. Mm -hmm. I have this old savings account over here. A lot of times maybe it is just sitting in cash earning nothing, mm -hmm. but it's a good time to tally up all your assets. Yes. And one thing we do for our clients that I think everybody should do is get it somewhere digitally where you can log into one place. Mm -hmm. The technology is there now. You can use it and you can actually see where all your investments are. And a lot of the software, like what we use, it can update all of your stuff in real time every single day. Mm -hmm. So I think having a real understanding of where your money is and understanding how it's allocated is something that's underappreciated that I think most people 
don't take enough time to do. And you're right, you probably have a lot of forgotten accounts that probably need some sort of reallocation. Yeah, you know, and speaking of forgotten accounts, particularly forgotten retirement accounts like those old 401ks, is knowing that one, you actually have a beneficiary tied to those accounts, and two, making sure that the beneficiary is the person that you want to receive that money. So you need my social security number because you want to update all your beneficiaries to me, right? Right. <laughs> you know, I just want you to know you are a beneficiary, just a very small percentage. <laughs> <laughs> we all know it, it, Liam is the, the most important one in that family. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Liam's going to be a very wealthy kid. <laughs> and talking about all the money that you want to get away for yourselves, think about your kids also, which clearly this is my state of life right now. Um, but 529s can be a really good option, especially if you live in a state like New York, which we do, there actually is a state tax deduction by putting money away for your kids in a college education account. So it's absolutely something to take a look at. Yeah, and not to mention a great estate planning tool. If you have grandkids, you can mm -hmm. get a lot of money front loaded. So exactly. And estate taxes could be changing too in the next few years. You got it. Yeah, and it has a triple benefit. You know, you can put it in uh, with a little bit of a tax deduction. It grows tax free. And as long as it's used for qualified education expenses, um, you take it out tax free. It's triple good, Chris. Triple good. <laughs> and the last thing is, is, is like, don't leave money on the table. Uh, if you're part of a 401k, you know, make sure you're putting the maximum amount that you can, or at least up to the match that your company gives you. You know, I've got to know a lot of people in my friend group that are like, oh, well, you know, I'm only going to put 3% in, but if their company's matching six, like you're leaving money on the table. Free money. Free yeah. money. Yeah. And you know what, Court, you know, you definitely want to make sure you're putting the most amount of money in your 401k because I heard the match is going to be big this year. I hope so. <laughs> oh, sorry, guys. I'm broke. <laughs>